Okay, so let's see an example of how arrays and pointers compare in C. Let me set up a symbolic constant. And let's make an array that's that big. We'll fill it in automatically with a for loop later. Let's set up a pointer. And one note there, you'll sometimes see the, the asterisk next to the, the type. I think that that's reasonable because the pointer is actually part of the type. Uh, you'll also sometimes see this, which is a little less reasonable since it's not really part of the name, it's part of the type. And typically I will use it spaced out just because that's what I'm used to. And it's what I've always done, but any of it works. The syntax will accept any, any of those. So I'm going to assign pointer equal to array. Now, if you've looked at the pointer arithmetic example, we set pointer to array index zero. This is actually equivalent. So we could have done this. Okay, and I also have probably terrible variable names here. Let me, I'm going to change this to nums. And I'm going to change the pointer name to just P. That way I'm not saying pointer. Now notice that P is an integer pointer. It's not an array pointer. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. And we're going to use this to point not necessarily to the array, although it can, because that array has a first pointer, but we're going to use it to point to the individual integers in that array. So let's fill the array. And we'll just set everything to whatever its index is. Okay, so we can print this array in multiple ways. So first, we can use array indexing. And this is what you've seen before many times. There won't be anything new. In fact, this is the same as in Java, at least getting using the array indexing, we're going to print array ii. And you may also realize that we can use pointer arithmetic here. Actually, I don't really need the new lines here, I don't think. Where I want the new line is here. And I'm still going to use a for loop. I don't like not having that space there. Okay, so here I'm going to print f, an integer, and I'm going to use pointer arithmetic. So notice each successive integer is going to be at p plus I, I and then to get that value I need to dereference it and I definitely want to dereference first because I don't want to have to think does dereferencing have precedence over addition so let's save this and run it I'm used to calling it array and it looks like we have some other issues. We didn't finish this line. Okay. Good. So you can see with array indexing or pointer arithmetic, we get the same results. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, let's do something different. 
let's do array indexing using a pointer. So our pointer is P. So this is the array indexing loop, but I changed the word nums to P. Seems weird, but let's see what happens. And it works, although we're missing a printf at the end. But you'll notice we did get, it did print all those variable values using the pointer. So I think a reasonable question at this point is, can I do pointer arithmetic with an array name? So here, instead of P, I'm going to use nums, which is the name of my array. And again, it works. So this brings up the eternal question, are arrays and pointers equivalent in C? Now, nothing we've done so far should lead you to believe that there's any difference between a pointer and an array. Clearly, we can use pointer names and array names interchangeably. Okay, make sure you grasp that point. Here we're doing array indexing using a pointer. Here we're doing pointer arithmetic using an array name. Notice no index, just the name of the array. In fact, if you'll remember, we use the array name when we assigned the pointer. Let's have a couple lines of output here and let's ask the question. Are arrays and pointers the same? Now this has a right answer but not all C programmers seem to know it. So first off, let's look at this. The size of nums and the size of the pointer So clearly, hopefully you can see at this point, they're not exactly the same. There's at least a difference in the size. Does that mean arrays are bigger than pointers? Well, if our array was an array of two integers, on this machine, integers are four bytes, two times four is eight, eight happens to be the size of a pointer. But in general, that, that's just a coincidence. If the array had one or more than two, then the size is going to be different. So even though we're pointing to the array with P, even though we can do array indexing with P pointing to array, they're clearly not the same. An array has memory associated with it. A pointer is pointing to some memory. Okay, so syntactically we can use them interchangeably, but they're definitely different. And what you definitely don't want to do is say, hey, I have a pointer. I'm going to start using array indexing all over the place. That's asking for trouble because if that pointer is not pointing to an array, there's no bounce checking in C. So you're just going to be writing all over the place in memory. If that memory is not allocated, you're going to be overwriting something. So another difference, you can assign a value to a pointer, but not an array name. Something like this is valid, but something like this is not. So that pointer can point to an array or it can point to a single integer. But it can't but an array can't point we can't assign that value to a single integer. So one other thing that we can do and this is not really related to any of the above but I want to make sure we see an example of it. Because this is a pretty common thing, and we'll actually see this a lot when we start talking about strings. If I set up a for loop
I can print the loop. Or I can print the values of the array using pointer, and then I can increment pointer each time, although I didn't call it pointer, I called it P. Let me fix it up here too, just so there's no confusion. So I'm incrementing the pointer each time through the loop. And I'm going to do that just enough times because I'm stopping where I have once I've gone count number of iterations. And I'm going to add some spaces here just to give it a little bit of indentation. So we have some bugs. So when we run, you can see we're printing them through using the increment operator. The downside is P is now pointing to the start of the array. So let's print what P is. So it's some address. And, and you'll notice you definitely want to make sure you understand what all these asterisks do. Here we're talking about the type. Here we're talking about the we're do, the dereference operator. So uh, it's a it's a distinction that's important to keep in mind. We, we're going to see a lot of ampersands and asterisks working with with pointers and memory. You definitely want to be careful whenever you see those and ask yourself what is this doing at this point. You don't want to just randomly change asterisks to pointers or remove asterisks to pointers from your code. I'm sorry, uh, ampersands and, and asterisks until you get it to run. That's asking for trouble, especially once we start doing dynamic memory allocation. So this is dereferencing it, dereferencing P. So let's run this. And you'll notice P, when we dereference it, is equal to 16. And the reason is, is that it's actually pointing past the end of the array because we're actually incrementing it 15 times. So this is actually an invalid value. We're not necessarily guaranteed to get this each time. I don't think we, we, we set that memory. So one of the things we could do here is to, to change this. So it's kind of a coincidence that that's 16. I'm trying to think if there's a reason for that. Because it's sort of handy, but I don't think we ever analyze lesson count, so we don't ever actually change. This will never be index 15. So if we happened to decrement P, it should be 15. Yeah, and so that's that's actually pointing back into the array. So this is some examples with pointer arithmetic. Uh, this is a technique we'll use a lot, even though, again, it damages the information we have about the start of the array. Um, but we'll see some more examples when we talk about strings and other data types.